I want to fight you, Alex. Please don't make me. Because if we do, who's going to fly the ship? It's illegally required to let parents remotely monitor their children from anywhere, right? You have children of your own? No. Could you please show us whatever you can of me? Oh my god. She does, doesn't she? You see that reaction? Strickland took her out of the clinic. Does Naomi have a kid? This was nearly an hour before the mirror fell. Oh, she might be alive. Your daughter might still be alive. He knew the battle was coming. Mm. And he went back for the girl. So Protogen, you know, again, is fucking up everything. Please take me with you. Alex, I'm busy. Whatever the hell you're doing, it can wait. We got a serious goddamn problem here. You can't have the lunch coats, King. I can try. Those missiles won't do you any good. We're going to do the same as you. Give them right back for us. Earth's not defenseless. They'll shoot them down. Uh, maybe not all. And then they'll destroy Taiko. And if they do? Just more than see done from a fire of the great Velta Revolution. Ah! <laughs> Whoa. Everyone you fucks is about to die, Fabos is going in there.
about that because they were this like secured it. but plus a shower and here they had a couple they were fanatics uh, mag boots keep them on takes a little bit of practice to get used to them <laughs> use this if you need something or you want to leave the cabin so you're locking me in this is how you treat all your guests you're not a guest you're a guy Naomi said that you're coming with us to find your little girl. It's a good reason. Hmm. I need to ask you something. Fred told you that was more prime molecule. You found quarters are missing after that. Why did you? I went there to kill him. Do whatever it takes to prevent another Eros. Or worse. You're not an executioner. You defended Miller when he killed Dresden House. Mm. It's any different. It's different because it's you, not a murderer. It's not the James Holden I know and love. refuses to release the clamps until Fred Johnson gives his personal authorization. And he's not. All right, I'm on it. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that was episode 8, and um, once again, there was a lot going on there. So, I mean, first of all, we'll just very briefly mention the arrival of this new character, um, Prax, who seems like he's going to be playing a role of at least somewhat importance in the future since they devoted so much time this episode to him, um, and now he's clearly he's going with them as they're going to search for traces of the protomolecule on Ganymede, <laughs> which is going to be interesting since do know that it's like a thing. It's like an alien. It's it's like some sort of living monster creature and that it is responsible for the deaths of those soldiers and and everything that happened on Ganymede. Um so I'm a little curious to see what that thing is, how it's tied to this uh, doctor who who Prax's daughter was seeing how kids are tied up in this situation his daughter in particular why this guy is there as a pediatrician I'm a little concerned does this mean that they're like trying to do more experiments they're experimenting on children now so not just experimenting on like a massive group of belters on Eros, but also doing experiments on children, and if so, this must have been experiments that have been going on for a while, like before everything that happened on Eros, right? Maybe? Hmm? Do I have the timeline wrong? I don't know. But so, it'll be interesting to see how that develops going forward. And then, you know, throughout this episode, another couple of, of, of serious big things that happened um, is going to be the major falling out, apparently, between Fred and Holden, and Naomi is in a awkward situation now because of that. And then some of the stuff we haven't saw uh, happening with um, Amos and Alex, so let me, let me talk about that first thing to begin with, Fred and Holden. I was a little surprised when I heard what they're saying um, to each other at the end there. It seemed... Um, a bit more hostile and antagonistic than I was anticipating and I suppose it kind of makes sense if you go back to you know the previous episodes they were disagreeing generally about Cortazar about what to do if they were to find more protomolecule and that disagreement is what was going to lead Holden to blatantly go and, and plan to try and execute the man um, so that was happening there and I guess you know because they were somewhat forced to continue to come together over the past episode in order to first they were trying to stop Dawes from making off with Cortazar and they seemed to both be antagonistic towards Dawes so there seemed to be still some, some overlap, some kind of partnership I guess there between Fred and Holden and then obviously them coming to rescue Fred and stop those other belters from taking the missiles it just seemed that they were very much still working together but Perhaps that was just kind of like crisis aftermath, and then this at the end here is is what was breaking between them, you know, coming back to the surface now that that crisis is passed. And so there's some pretty harsh things that's being said on both sides. You know, Fred is like, if you find protomolecule and you're not going to give it to me, don't even bother coming back here. Um, you won't be welcome, which is... A pretty serious thing since that is basically been like their their safe place like the place that they could go and and turn to if they were in crisis or even just needed somewhere to be like where are they gonna go now <laughs> um so that's a big deal but then holden is also saying to fred well you think you're gonna be in charge anymore like kind of in a, a taunting manner almost and and Almost as though, you know, he's pleased about the possibility that Fred could be removed, which you'd think that that would be not good. I mean, obviously, you and Fred have differences of opinion right now regarding this, but it could be someone significantly worse or, or completely against your interests in any sort of way who's put in there if Fred is replaced. I don't know. So, we'll see. Obviously, there's differences between Fred and Anderson Dawes, and I, I do think one other thing that's kind of interesting to think about going forward is um, Drummer, when she's talking to Naomi, she very clearly seems to think that Fred is more of the person that 
they should be aligning with um, as as belters, that they should be aligning with him as opposed to Anderson Dawes, and she being probably the person that would know both of them the best. So I think that's maybe suggestive, indicative of the various, the different characters between the two men. Uh, I don't know. Um, and then, of course, with everything happening with Holden and Fred in this episode, you have Naomi seemingly somewhat caught in the middle. But I was very struck by how, like, angry she was getting with Holden and how hostile, given that she's keeping much more serious secrets. And for all she knew, until they discovered that it was on Ganymede, the protomolecule that um, Cortazar was, was talking to or listening to, um, for all she knew, it could have been the protomolecule that she had saved and hadn't destroyed. And she thought that there was a good chance of that, and she continued to hide that, even knowing that. Um, and then, you know, she's seemingly relieved that that's not the case, but still, she's keeping this a secret. And how does she know that at any second that protomolecule sample couldn't just suddenly start talking to Cortazar and lead Dawes right there to it? I, I, I'm a little, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm a little baffled that she's continuing to keep this a secret in with the potential danger going on with it. And I understand that there will be bad consequences for her with Holden if he's going to find out the truth. But you'd think that the further this goes on and the more danger that people are being put in because of it, the worse that it would be when eventually it comes out. Because she has to assume that eventually someone's going to find out about this, right? Like, why else would she save it unless she wants to use it for some sort of purpose? And if she's going to use it for some sort of purpose, I don't know. And then speaking of Naomi... Does Naomi have a kid? I know that was just like a throwaway kind of moment, but when she made that statement to Prax, he he spoke in such a way as like, oh, well, that's something that only somebody with children would know, so, oh, you have kids. And the look on her face, you know, she said no really quickly, but I don't know. So that's curious. We still don't know that much about Naomi's past, so it makes me think about it. We still don't know much about the past of a lot of them, so... And that, okay, and so that brings me back to the other big thing, takeaway from this episode I wanted to talk about, which was the, what we saw with Amos, and Amos and Alex in particular. So Amos really does seem to be having some sort of, like, breakdown, some sort of crisis in the aftermath of what happened with him and the kid, and then his conversations with Cortazar about, you know, how he relates to people, and Cortazar saying that, you know, you should burn off whatever is left of you that cares or that wishes you still had these connections to people. And it seems like Amos is really struggling with that. You see him looking up the name of the woman who he said that, or he somewhat had some connection to, loved after his mother was gone back on Earth. He's looking for this person. You know, he's, he's trying to, at the same time, though, cut himself off, it seems, from everybody around him. He's not, like, engaging with the rest of the crew of the Rossi or helping them out with stuff until near the end there. He's not wanting to help the refugees. He's seemingly going off and just, I don't know what he's doing, but he didn't look good. Um, and Alex is the one that's really noticing this. And then, of course, when he kind of confronts him about it and is saying it's not okay to just do nothing when all these people need your help, if you have no other reason other than you don't feel like it, and then um, basically almost just attacks him, loses it, attacks him physically, and then he's able to restrain himself back in somewhat, but but then, you know, he's going to come back and, and say to Alex, you know, he kind of suggests that Alex is maybe being hypocritical in talking about people needing to take care of one another when he seemingly has abandoned his family on Mars. And so I thought that was really interesting. One, he does, I mean, he has a point on the one side of it. Amos has a point. But kind of like on a deeper level, I just find it really interesting that he seemed to take such offense to that. And then at the very end, you see him talking to, um, to Prax when Prax is coming with them and saying, oh, so you're coming because you want to find your kid. And he's like, that's, that's a good reason. So I mean, just kind of putting all these things together between his confrontation of Alex about kind of abandoning his family, between how upset he was when he kind of came between that kid and the kid's mother, and then thinking about his own mother and connections and past, and then what he said there, it's 
really interesting to me to think about. He seems to have this kind of deep-seated wound, wound, I'd say, and that ties into what Alex was saying, you know, what happened to you and kind of the look on Amos's face. Obviously, he experienced some pretty traumatic things or something horrible and traumatic when he was a kid that and that is led him to be the way he is now a way that he doesn't like and that he you know thinks is wrong or regrets in some sort of some manner um yeah so it seems it's very much a wound that's tied to his childhood and and so that leaves him with this kind of maybe sensitive spot where he has a concern for children and and maybe a very very strict idea of how adults should act towards children or what how parents should act towards their kids um and family so i i just think that's fascinating and i'll be interested to see how that plays out going forward too but but all right guys i think i'm gonna wrap it up there for today um just briefly no sign of Bobby or Avasarala or anything happening there so I'm assuming next episode maybe we'll get more of what's going on on, on um, this Earth Mars summit so that'll be interesting. Alright so I'll just say thank you guys so much for joining me once again and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye!